Imogen from Waffle TV and here's my interview with the director of What's He Building In There. So you used to be in plays yourself, just mm -hmm. acting, so um, why did you decide to try writing and directing? Um, well, I don't know really. I, uh, the idea for the play came when I was at school and I had to write a, a play for my um, advanced higher creative writing course. Uh, it was the night before and a friend, I asked a friend give me an idea for a play and he said how about a carpenter who's fallen in love with a cabinet that he's made and so uh, I just ran with that but I changed it to a chair which I think is the crucial difference uh -huh. I think that makes it so that's where your inspiration came yeah, from yeah totally all right well um I must admit like the description makes people want to come see it, I yeah. think because they're so curious about what it's about I'm hoping they come on the premise alone yeah, yeah. but um is, is that what you're trying to achieve that like, you think that people are going to want to come see it because they yeah, I mean, there's, it's not it's not entirely original. It's been done before. I mean, there's uh, the goat by uh, what's his name? Black, completely blank. The goat about the man who falls in love with a goat, mm. and these kind of uh, these things have been done before. But I'm hoping that the fringe is something that will stand out and people yeah. want, want to see out over the other plays. Yeah. And then um, what type of audience do you think will want to come see? I don't know, I'm not sure who it will appeal to in terms of pitching it. I don't know who will want to see a play about a carpenter who falls in love with a chair. But I'm, I'm positive that anyone would enjoy it were they to come and see it. Yeah, but um, your first show was today, wasn't it? it was How did that go? It went really well. Um, it's always a bit shaky when you get into a new venue, new stage, um, new audience. But it went surprisingly well uh, and I'm, I'm really happy with it. And it'll keep yeah, of course, yeah, it was flicking it. up. And you're performing to the 18th of August? Every day to the 18th. And you'll say is it 12pm? It's at midday Zoo at Zoo Venues in the Yeah, alright, and um, it's described as an absurd dark comedy. Why is that? I don't know, I think you've got the, the central premise. Uh, it's a bit sort of wacky and surreal. Um, but I'm hoping people will come expecting comedy. Yeah. But well, hopefully they see the underlying. Sort so there's not that much comedy in there. It's more no, there's a lot of comedy in there. I, I mean, you take it's different. Every audience laughs at a different thing. Sometimes we're, we're continually surprised at what people laugh at. Um, but I'm hoping that people will all find the same things uh, sad, sad, and sort of tragic. Yeah. yeah. In, some, in terms of like artisticness, have you? Did you have anyone else helping you, or did you just have to direct the whole thing and think? Well, of I've got things? an entire team. It's a very collaborative project. I mean the. Uh, I've got an entire, I've got five actors, stage manager, makeup artist, costume designer, um, a musician, Daniel Mackay, who, who creates a lot of the music and that is integral to the action. That, In fact, he, he's as much uh, a, a sort of directorial force as I am because what he does on the guitar um, helps the actors decide what they're going to do on stage yeah. as well. So it's really collaborative. I'm not the person telling people what to do really. I'm kind of just overseeing things. Yeah. But um, there's also like a musical instrumental school yes. as well. Yeah. So is the like, dancing in it or anything? Is it quite physical? Or is there it is a, there is one moment which is vaguely dance orientated, but it's it's quite somber in mood to play. But as I say, it's dark comedy, so there's not much lively dancing. There's a lot of choreography in terms of the movement. Um, but the music is something that I don't think anyone will have really heard before. It's very, it's, as I say, it's guitar. But Daniel's using a lot of effects and loopers, and it, it doesn't sound anything like guitar. It's like nothing oh. you've ever heard before. It's very synthetic, um, but I think it kind of integrates really well into the action, into the storyline. Um, how did you go about casting? Uh, we held open auditions uh, for all the uh, membership of, of Stag, um, and I just I picked based on on what I'd seen in the auditions and, and what I'd seen people do before. Uh, it was quite difficult to cast actually. So did you not know the people that you cast? I knew most of them. Uh, some of them I didn't know so well and uh, one of them, Jock, I didn't know at all at that point really but um, I really can't re imagine it any, any other actors actually. Um, it was difficult to cast but I'm very glad for what yeah. was happening. Um, and what about, would you ever consider writing another play? Or? Yeah, I, I would consider writing another play and I would consider directing another play. I don't think I would ever write and direct again. Do you think you'd rather go back to acting or staying? No, I'm, I don't, I'm not an actor really. Oh, All right. Uh, I do really enjoy uh, making plays and stuff, uh, but kind of more behind the scenes. Oh. Okay, well, thank you very much for this interview. Keep watching Humble TV, we'll still be posting videos every day.